to be in every home library. It's entitled Color, Communism, and Common Sense by Manning Johnson. Manning Johnson was a Negro, and he was also a member of the Communist Party. He joined the party as a young man because he honestly believed that the Communists were trying to improve the conditions of his people. He was a dedicated Communist. But after many years, Manning Johnson finally came to the realization that the Communists weren't the least bit interested in improving the conditions of the Negro people. He discovered that instead they were merely planning to use his people, and these are his words, to use them as cannon fodder in a bloody revolution to destroy America. As early as 1928, the Communists declared that the racial differences among our people constituted the weakest and most vulnerable point in our social fabric. By constantly probing and straining at this one spot, they calculated that eventually the cloth could be torn apart and that Americans could be divided, weakened, and perhaps even set against each other in open combat. We must not be led into placing the blame for the riots, the civil disorders, on the Negro people of our nation. Even those few who are promoting hatred and violence in the black communities are not themselves the cause. They're merely being used by forces far bigger than they are to promote the violent phase of the revolution in America. Hoping to avoid further violence and bloodshed, the public is to be pressured into accepting measures that will move the country gradually and legally toward communism, but without calling it that. The strategy of the proletarian revolution calls for the quiet conversion of our government into a communist regime, but under the banner of socialism. The uh, new program of the Communist Party on this subject has this to say. The term socialism describes but the first stage of a new society that in its full development is called communism. Socialism is a transitional stage. The building of socialism is the communist revolution in America. It represents the process whereby our country can be moved gradually toward communism without the people even being aware of it. They have one and only one solution for all problems. More government, more government, and then more and more until it's total government. Total government is communism. We must not be fooled into thinking that the causes of our civil turmoil are such things as poverty, poor housing, lack of education, and similar social or economic factors. As a matter of fact, most of today's self-styled revolutionaries, black and white, come from good homes, could earn better than average incomes if they wanted to work. And in fact, they're products of some of the finest institutions of higher learning. We mustn't resort to violence either as a means of furthering political or social goals. And we must do everything humanly possible to discourage others from doing so. We must support our local police. Nothing can be quite so damaging to police morale and efficiency as converting every arrest into a trial of the policeman instead of the criminal. Now in passing, ladies and gentlemen, you may have wondered why the Communist Party has been a staunch supporter of the drive to place a black studies curriculum into our high schools and colleges. Well. The reason becomes obvious the minute you take a look at the textbooks and the study guides. Under the guise of academic balance, these courses have become a brilliant device for conditioning young people to accept still one more part of the total program for revolution. We must discover the identity of those individuals, both above and below, who consciously are furthering the communist program for revolution and then remove them from their positions of trust and leadership. Now, of course, the minute you begin to think along these lines, you'll become the target of a whole barrage of attacks. You'll be called a right-wing extremist, a fascist, or at least a dictator. Some years ago, I happened to attend a meeting where several anti-communist refugees from behind the Iron Curtain were called upon to relate their personal experiences. One of the refugees spoke up and he said, you know, I came to America expecting to find a nation of free men. But instead, I find exactly the same thing. Everywhere I look, I see men and women who know that communists are making headway in this country. They know that something must be done and that someone must stand up to them. But they themselves do nothing. They remain silent. 
because they're afraid that if they speak out or take a stand publicly, it'll be bad for business. They may lose a client. They may even lose their jobs. If communism should ever come to America, we'll face more death, destruction, and human suffering than any people in history has ever faced at the hands of their invading conquerors. It's literally a question of life and death for all of us. And it's about time the American people began to face up to that fact and to act accordingly. Thank you.